the, the opportunity here is for us to talk about the broad spectrum of the arts, visual art, performing art, music, theater, dance, the creative industries as a whole. And uh, I want to just, uh, I have written testimony that I've, I've sent forward. I simply want to say a few words, a few remarks that relates to that. And my remarks are basically that I have uh, great news and I have tough news. And you've heard some of the both already um, as, as we've gone forward. Um, Louise Slaughter, the great leader of our Congressional Arts Caucus, has uh, been very articulate um, on, on talking about both the problems that the arts face and the opportunities here. Um, the great news is this. Um, we know that there are 686,000 um, organizations out there, for-profit and non-profit organizations uh, in, in, in the arts. Uh, we know that they employ 2.8 million people. That's more than most people realize. And right there, it's, it's interesting to look at that as 4.2% of all businesses in America um, and over 2% of all the jobs in America. And it's a growth industry as a whole. Um, the figures from 2008 to 2009, there's a 10 percent growth in the numbers of these organizations. Um, when we take a look at these creative industries, if I were to take uh, a look at um, Congressman Miller's uh, district, there are 1,292 businesses, arts businesses in that district, employing 3,983 people. Um, and simply looking at the committee members, each of you has a packet with those figures. But I, I, I look at uh, uh, Congresswoman Clark's district, um, 1,287 businesses employing 4,000 people. Um, Congresswoman Fudge's district, um, uh, 1,416 businesses employing 9,320 people. This is big. This is important. This is good news for the arts. And it's the kind of news that the United States Conference of Mayors thought was so important that they, when they came forward with their 10-point plan for a better America um, to the uh, current administration, they included the arts as one of the 10 points. Um, another thing that's very important for this committee, arts education. Arts education is at the core of creating those audiences and, and helping to create the actual artists themselves. And um, the conference board recently, the, the, the organization that all of business goes to for its information came forward with a study that said that the businesses in the 21st century, number one thing they want is creativity, creative 21st century workers. But what was even more interesting is that they thought that um, along with the superintendents of schools and other leaders um, in education, that the, the top of the list for creating creativity was having arts education in the schools. This is from the business community, not from Americans for the Arts, and I think that's very significant. If I turn to the not-for-profit community, um, 100,000 of those uh, 686,000 businesses are not-for-profit businesses. Um, museums and theaters and dance companies um, in, in every corner of the country, in every one of your districts. Um, 5.7 million jobs come um, either directly or indirectly out of that non-profit business. You heard Congresswoman Slaughter mention it as a $166 billion economic impact, returning $29 billion to uh, federal, state, and local tax coffers. Um, one thing that I think you, you, you here in this committee should realize is that that growth industry um, largely was helped in 1965 when you launched the current infrastructure of support in the arts in America today, the National Endowment for the Arts coming out of this committee, um, the state structure of state arts agencies and the local arts agencies across the country, the infrastructure of support as we know it today. Um, what I think is uh, exciting there is that there's proof with those figures that the arts mean business, big business in this country. Now for some tough news. Um, 10,000 of those organizations are at risk in America. 10% of those organizations are at risk of going out of business entirely. Um, 260,000 jobs um, would be lost if that were, were the case. The other 90% are having trouble as well, and there's job loss there uh, um, as well. But those figures get even bigger, bigger than we'd want to actually uh, look at um, as a loss in, in this country. Uh, you've heard already that artists are um, unemployed currently at twice the rate of other professionals, the National Endowment for the Arts. Where does the money for the arts come from in America? We've talked about a number of things here, but it's basically pretty simple. Those 100,000 nonprofit organizations get their money from three sources. Half their money comes from earned income. That means the ticket buyer, the person who attends an event, is important. And disposable income is down, so that's being hurt. 40% uh, comes from the private sector, donations, corporate, individual, foundation. 
with portfolios down, that money is hurt. The last 10% comes from government, most of it from local government and then state government, and a tiny piece from the federal government. But that federal government piece has been the part that has leveraged um, all the rest over the last uh, half century. Um, so I, I think that it's important to understand that dynamic and then look at all, all of, I, I, I am not going to read the list of um, hundreds of organizations that I have here that are actually going out of business all across the country or at risk, but I will submit that as part of the testimony. Um, Thank you. What I want to say is there's hope on the horizon. You're going to say it very quickly, Mr. Lynch. And you have given that hope. The omnibus bill, $10 million more for the National Endowment for the Arts, the Economic Recovery Bill, $50 million more, going out through that mechanism across the country. That hope is important, and what it says to me is that the arts are important, arts jobs and arts and economic impact are important and bigger than most people realize. The arts in America are at risk, and I ask the committee to help others understand that the arts are not part of the problem, but part of the solution to America's problems.